A week after former Lord's Resistance Army or LRA rebel commander Dominic Ongwen made his first appearance before the International Criminal Court in The Hague, Netherlands, the Ugandan government has pledged its commitment to cooperate with the court to ensure that Ongwen's trial is smooth. Attorney General Peter Nyombi, who addressed journalists at the Government Media Center, says government has set up a technical team to work with the ICC on various matters connected to Ongwen's trial. In case the ICC comes up and requests for assistance, we can readily give that assistance to the ICC. But it's really in the areas of investigation, accessing witnesses and what have you. The ICC does not have a police of its own. Does not have the implementing mechanism of its own. It uses the mechanisms, investigative mechanisms, within the state's parties. This seems to be a departure from President Yoweri Museveni's earlier stance that Uganda would not cooperate with the ICC. The president made the remarks late last year in Nairobi while commenting on the trial of Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto. Kenyatta's case has since been dropped off while Ruto's is ongoing. Some senior ICC officials will soon fly into Uganda to gather information on Ongwen's case. Yesterday I got uh, an email from the, uh, from the registrar informing us that they're coming here on the 8th and to meet with you and to get some of the documents and verification that they need. There have also been questions on why Ongwen's trial could not be done in Uganda's International War Criminal Division of the High Court. Dominic Ongwen and the other four or five had already been indicted at the ICC. So matter put is not available for them. And in any case, the crimes against which they are charged, they traverse different borders. Dominic Ongwen is expected back in the ICC's pre-trial chamber too on the 24th of August for the confirmation of charges hearing presided over by single judge Ekaterina Trendafilova. This hearing is to determine whether there is sufficient evidence to establish substantial grounds to believe that the person committed each of these crimes for which they are charged. Suhail Mugavi, NTV.